Welcome to Bible 360 John. John introduces us to Jesus, not at Jesus' birth, but at the very beginning of the creation of the cosmos. Jesus is the Word made flesh, who was one with God at creation. God speaks to the world now through Jesus. John tells us the purpose of his book. These things are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, and that by believing you may have life in his name. We learn who Jesus is in the first chapter in bits and pieces in separate conversations, that Jesus is the Lamb of God, the Son of Man, yet the Son of God, Teacher, Messiah, and King. While the other Gospels showcase parables, miracles, and preaching to the crowd, John speaks to individuals and groups and focuses on signs. Jesus uses riddles, provocative questions, and metaphors to lead people towards the truth. He rarely will just talk about a miracle without unpacking it and helping us to see what this sign means. Jesus usually doesn't give straightforward answers because even the teachers of Israel, such as Nicodemus, struggle to grasp and accept what he says. The light has come into the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. Jesus often plays cat and mouse, keeping people on off balance so that they're more vulnerable to the truth and to being honest. Instead of answering the first disciples who want to know where he's going, Jesus says, come and see. The Gospel of John is not a place simply to find answers. It is an invitation to follow Jesus and to see where he takes you. John doesn't record Jesus' miracles willy-nilly. The miracles reveal something. They are signs pointing to something beyond the acts themselves. Jesus is not seeking to silence all his naysayers in them. Rather, he's preparing us to repent and afterwards believe. His signs are not exactly proof positive. Rather, he's planting seeds of faith, which can be accepted or rejected. Chapters 2 through 5 focus on the presence and worship of Yahweh. Jesus turns water into wine, his first miracle, which is a foretaste of the feast to come of paradise. Jesus then resists, rejects the abuses of the temple and claims that he himself is the true temple. He is where God will be reconciled to his people, and on the third day he will be raised up. Nicodemus, a member of the Jewish High Council, comes to Jesus at night, which signifies that Nicodemus is in the dark along with the rest of the world. Salvation, it turns out, will not be found in a Q&A session, but only can be revealed to those who are born again of water and the Spirit. The God of Israel cannot be understood apart from the signs where he, what he gives, especially the sign of the Son of Man lifted up on the cross. Jesus then speaks about worship to a Samaritan woman. She is thirsty, but satisfaction is not to be found in water or sexual relationships, but in worshiping the Father in spirit and in truth. In chapters 5 through 10, Jesus talks with the people and religious leaders using Jewish feasts and festivals as a jumping off point. Jesus heals on the Sabbath because his Father is restoring and giving life all the time. Jesus feeds a crowd of 5,000 plus people because he is the bread of life. When he suggests that they eat his body and drink his blood, many are confused, offended, and stop following. Jesus shouts out in the temple courts that he is the spring of living water, just like the rock from which Moses drew water in the wilderness. Throughout, people struggle to not only understand, they don't want to see as a blind man and his subsequent expulsion from the temple for giving his testimony about Jesus demonstrates. The sign of life Jesus gives in raising Lazarus will actually lead to his death. Too many people are paying attention to him for the Jewish ruling's liking. The chief priests know that Jesus is innocent, but they will scapegoat him so that they can remain in power. The Pharisees are bothered when Jesus is hailed as the son of David on Palm Sunday. Jesus predicts that his glory is imminent. However, his glory will be to be crucified so that he can draw all men to himself. Jesus withdraws from public to spend the next five chapters preparing his disciples for his departure. He is the way to the Father, truth, and life. He warns them he is leaving, but the Holy Spirit will pick up where he left off. He also urges them to stay connected to him, like branches to a vine. He doesn't just tell them to love one another, he demonstrates it in washing their feet. Then he prays for his disciples and all Christians who will follow after. He does not pray that they are delivered without peril. They will have trouble, but take heart because he has overcome. At his arrest, Peter is told to put away his sword because it's better to follow God's will than to resist evil men. When he can't fight back, though, Peter fails at being faithful and denies Jesus three times. Jesus continues to be evasive and challenging even at his trial. An exasperated Pilate asks, what is truth? The world certainly does prefer deceit and darkness. Peter prefers fighting to faith. The high priests prefer intimidation and insults to truly understanding what Jesus has taught. Pilate prefers an unjust death to the headache of defending the truth. The crowds prefer an insurrection and Barabbas over their king. 
Jesus' crucifixion is the outcome John has prepared us for since the beginning of the book. After all, Jesus tells Pilate that his kingdom is not of this world. If Jesus wanted to be saved, he would have fought back. But this is the Father's plan. Jesus is the good shepherd who lays down the life for his sheep. Jesus is the promised good shepherd that his people had lacked. But his sheep, it turns out, were not just those of Israel, but the sheep of all nations. Jesus is resurrected on Easter, but the world is still in the dark. Mary Magdalene, Peter, and John don't understand the empty tomb. The disciples are afraid when he appears before them. Thomas doubts, but then he utters a wonderful confession, my Lord and my God. Finally, they see. Jesus instructs the disciples to be at peace as God is at peace with them and to forgive other sins just as he has forgiven theirs. Even Jesus' last conversation regarding John's future reveals that even though Jesus still sometimes puzzles us, we can trust and follow in him.